The bar door slams shut behind you with a heavy clang. You are swallowed whole into the belly of the hostile dungeon, and you are all alone. The stone slabs are cold and unyielding underneath your bare feet, and only a few flickering torches provide a little light, but no warmth. You feel a shiver running down your spine. Who knows what dangers lie inside this prison? But you must run, you must fight, and you must prevail, because otherwise the princess you love will soon be in the clutches of an evil man. This is how the 1989 game Prince of Persia starts, throwing you right into an environment that seems so barren, static and quiet that it would make any video game seem boring compared to today's standards. But there is something about Prince of Persia that draws you in, thrills you and amazes you like the soft voice of Shehrazad weaving her tale. For this tale is inspired by the Arabian Night Stories. He plays the game's homonym, the Prince of Persia. But who is he? He is an unnamed character, wearing nondescript clothing, and he never utters a word. He doesn't even look like an Arab, with his fair skin and blonde hair. There is very little known about him, which leaves your mind free reign to imagine whatever you wish. Is he a prince who suffered an injustice? Is he a pauper who fell in love with a princess? The game lets you write his story yourself, unless you read the manual where you can find the whole exposition. <laughs> Let's take a look. It is a time of darkness. While the Sultan is off fighting a foreign war, his Grand Vizier Jafar has seized the reins of power. Throughout the land, people groan under the yoke of tyranny and dream of better days. You are the only obstacle between Jafar and the throne. An adventurer from a foreign land, innocent of palace intrigues, you have won the heart of the Sultan's lovely young daughter, and in doing so, you have unwillingly made a powerful enemy. On Jafar's orders, you are stripped of your sword and possessions, and thrown into the Sultan's dungeons. As for the princess, Jafar gives her a choice, and an hour to decide. Marry him, or die. Locked in her room high in the palace tower, the princess rests all her hopes on you. For when the last sands drain from the hourglass, her choice can bring only a throne for the Grand Vizier, a new reign of terror for his long-suffering subjects, and death for the brave youth who might have been Prince of Persia. Ooh, a woeful fate will befall the princess if you cannot rescue her on time. And the game takes no time at all to tell you that her minutes are numbered. And as you venture into the maze-like dungeon, all manner of dangers await you. From falls to your death, to sharp spikes and chompers just waiting to draw blood. And if that wasn't enough, Jafar's men are lurking around the next corner with their swords at the ready. And those aren't even all the obstacles you will face. The Prince of Persia game has a certain charm, despite its unimpressive video and audio performance by today's standards. But let's go back, back to 1989, and learn how this game was conceived and why many consider it a milestone in video gaming history. Once upon a time, a man named Jordan Mechner set out to create a new computer game that would have realistic animations and a captivating story. For the animation, he used rotoscoping, which is a technique that consists of tracing over filmed footage, frame by frame, then inputting that image into the computer, pixel by pixel. And thus, he created the game Karateka. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not straying too far from the main subject here. Karateka's design was the basis from which he conceived Prince of Persia. Once again, the story and realistic characters were the nucleus around which the game took shape. The story was, as we have seen, inspired by the Arabian Nights tales, with a touch of adventuring from swashbuckling films and, of course, the mandatory puzzles and exploration. The opening sequence of the Indiana Jones film Raiders of the Lost Ark sparked the idea for the platforming and traps. The fighting was not planned from the start, since Jordan Mechner initially intended the prince as a pacifist, and also there was only so much space on a disc back then. But one of his friends insisted, and good thing that they did, because the combat rounds up the game and adds a bit more dynamism. The first enemy to be created was the Princess Shadow, who is born out of a magical mirror. 
Here, working against the hardware limitations, Mr. Mehner had the interesting idea to negate the image of the prints. Uh, we're not going to get technical here, which resulted in a shimmering outline. As for the guards and Jafar, he managed to squeeze a little more disk space for them too. Regarding the characters, his main goal was for them to be believable and relatable. The prince needed to look not like a 2D sprite, but like a person with actual weight. The actor to bring the prince to life was his brother, whom he filmed running, jumping and climbing up on a wall. Mr. Mehner said that it almost felt like his brother's personality was showing through in the prince's animation, and I do tend to agree. There is a youthfulness that fits very well with the character. As for the sword fights, he used footage from an old Robin Hood film that still manages to fit very well with the overall feel of the game. The Prince of Persia game started its life on the Apple II and due to its popularity was soon ported to various other platforms such as the PC, Atari ST, Amstrad CPC, SNES, Sega CD, etc. Some of these ports differ from the original mostly due to the capabilities of each system. But it is worth to note the SNES port, which besides the different graphics also added a bit more content to some of the levels. Prince of Persia later became a very successful series, with multiple video games produced and even a movie. However, despite, or maybe also thanks to, the success of these sequels and spin-offs, the first Prince of Persia game holds a special place in the memory of many people who played it back in the day. And even nowadays, there are still ports and mods for it, from being able to play it on your mobile phone, to even playing as the princess rescuing herself. The fan community has been keeping this game alive and has made it easier to play it on a modern computer, as well as install new mods or change the gameplay or graphic style. If you feel the nostalgia nudging you in the ribs, or if you are intrigued by hearing about this game for the first time, I strongly suggest you start it up, take a drink of your health potion of choice, and hurry off to save the princess! She's counting on you! Go! What are you waiting for? Shoo! <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. My final thoughts on this game. It's really awesome. It was quite an achievement for its time, and it still holds up very well to this day. I've spent hours in that dungeon, making a little bit of progress each time. This game, Jazz Jack Rabbit and Wolfenstein 3D, were my childhood. I wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone who is a fan of old school games and isn't daunted by rudimentary graphics and a sparse soundscape. And when you're done, check out the mods. There are some pretty good mods out there, all made by fans. And my little story at the beginning was just skimming the surface. If you want to learn more, there are lots of resources out there, including Jordan Mechner's own journal from back in the day and magazine articles and interviews. I'll put links to some of them in the video description. Anyway, I hope you give this game a try. And on a future video, I'm going to treat you to some gameplay highlights and some tips and tricks as well. So, come back soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.